Today on the Slant Lens, we're going to take a look at... Equivalency. Equivalency. Not equivalent exposure. Equivalency. Equivalency. What the heck is that? What the heck is that? Okay, hi, this is JP Morgan. And this is Kenneth Merrill. Today on Slant Lens, we're going to take a look at equivalency. Equivalency is a very, very complicated <laughs> subject matter, but one people have been screaming about because of the last format comparison we did. Yeah, so we did a format comparison a little while back, and everyone on there kept saying, equivalency, you should have shot equivalent exposures, you're letting different amounts of light in the camera, and I was just like, what are these people talking about? I obviously am not a professional because I don't know what this is. Obviously, we don't obviously. have a clue what we're doing. So I did a deep dive and researched what equivalency is, and it's actually extremely interesting, and we're gonna tell you all about it. So let's take a look at equivalency next here on the Slant Lens. So the first thing we need to talk about in order to understand this is crop factor, and, and most of us are familiar with what that is. So if you have like a full frame sensor, and that's really what crop factor kind of works off from full frame. If you put an APS-C sensor, that's gonna be a crop factor of 1.5. So a 50 millimeter lens on full frame on an APS-C sensor is going to be a 75 millimeter. It's gonna be cropped in, you're not gonna see as much. Your field of view is not going to be as great on that APS-C sensor. If you go the other direction with medium format, it goes the other way. So your 50 mil is gonna be more like a 40 or 35 millimeter. Yeah. Now generally we shoot for field of view. So we'll end up using different focal lengths on different cameras to achieve the same field of view because we want a certain frame size or to see a certain distance or we want to get kind of a wider angle or something like that. So all the cameras are gonna have roughly the same field of view, but they're using different focal lengths to achieve that. Now the depth of field in your image is determined by one thing and that is the physical aperture of your lens. Not the aperture number, but the physical opening in the lens that's Which is going to be through. different on each one of these formats. The physical opening at 2.8 is going to be different on every single one of these. It's not going to give you the same depth of field because that 2.8 size is going to be a different opening size on each one of these lenses. The way we calculate the diameter of that opening is actually by taking the focal length that you're shooting and dividing it by the F number. So really easy if we're shooting a 100 millimeter lens at an F2 then the physical aperture, the diameter, will be 50 millimeters across. If we're shooting a 50 millimeter in F2, the physical aperture will be 25 millimeters across. If we're shooting an F4, then that physical diameter will be 12.5 millimeters. So we should start off by shooting each one of these lenses at 2.8. Yeah. And just see how different that depth of field is for each lens at 2.8. So that gives us just a, an idea of exactly where does the depth of field build on each of these cameras. And you see it drastically. I mean, this is a micro four thirds. Uh, there's, I mean, there's it's some out of focus. It's uh -huh. not all sharp by any means, but the depth of field is pretty deep. Then you go to the crop sensor, the X-T4. Little less depth of field. Not a huge jump, but a little less. Some. And then we go to the Sony, and Lord. that's like a big jump. Big jump. There. Yeah. Big jump. And then the medium format camera. Not as much of a jump, but yeah. It, it, as you, yeah. So now we've shot at the same aperture number on all the cameras. Let's talk about equivalency. Equival the idea of equivalency is basically that you are allowing the same amount of light into the camera body no matter which lens or which format you're using. If we want the same amount of light, all of the physical diameters on the apertures are going to have to match, which means doing a lot of math, but it's actually very simple. Basically, for every format size you go up, you, you stop down one. So let's start at 2.8 on our Micro Four Thirds camera to get the same physical aperture on our crop sensor camera, APS-C camera, we just go to an F4. F4. And then to get the same amount of light in our full frame camera, we go to an F5.6. And then on our medium format camera, we go to an F8. But we have one problem here. Do you know what the problem is? Well, yeah. When you put a different aperture on every different camera, you have a different exposure for every different camera. Yeah, exactly. So now you got to compensate that with shutter. <laughs> or ISO. Or ISO. Now, we don't want to do the shutter because, again, this is equivalency, so it's all about letting the same amount of light in. If we start dragging the shutter for some of these cameras, and we're just allowing more light we're in. We're just now letting more <laughs> light in, which means we're back to where we started from. With the ISO. So in order to compensate for the smaller shutters on the larger sensor cameras, we're going to step up the ISO. So that means if we start at 200 ISO on our Olympus, because that's the lowest it can go, we're gonna be shooting at a 1600 ISO on our medium format camera, because we've stopped down to an F8. Okay, so now we're shooting with our equivalency settings. The Olympus will be the same settings as last time. It's shooting at ISO 200, that's the lowest it can go, and an f2.8. Uh, the shutter speeds will be the same across all the cameras, so this image should look pretty familiar. And then we go to the Fuji X-T4, and man, it does look 
pretty similar. Very similar <laughs> focus wise. They, yeah, you look at the king in the back. I mean, our focus is holding about the same from the three to the five. Yeah, very yeah. very similar. Yeah. And this is this is not a two eight. This is this is four. This is a four. Yeah. So yeah. the Fuji is at a four, and we have basically the same basically amount the of depth same of field. field. So that means we have to go to five six on the next one at that. Yeah, pretty similar. I, you know, maybe if I want to nitpick this, maybe there's a slight difference in terms of focus between yeah. the Fuji and, and the Sony. The Sony might be slightly shallower, but yeah. So this is now at, at uh, F8? This is at an F8. So, so those, those all look very much, yeah, they look equally as... Uh, yeah, F8 on the medium format compared to the F2.8. Wow. On the Olympus. Boy, very, they, the same amount of depth of field, really. They do look very similar. You, well, I don't know. Though. I mean, obviously, there are, there's a huge resolution difference here because this is the Olympus is a 20 megapixel image. The GFX is a 100 megapixel image. So you're going to see way more detail in the GFX. The grain structure looks way better on the GFX 100 than it does on the Olympus to me. I agree with you. The GFX is at 1600 ISO to compensate for the lack of light in the exposure. The Olympus is at 200 ISO, and I still think that the GFX is slightly cleaner than the Olympus. I absolutely feel like it is. Not to mention the better detail, of course, because you have more resolution. Yeah, that's a whole other issue. But just grain structure alone, yeah. it looks like that the GFX 100 is a much nicer grain pattern than we're getting on the Olympus. So the equivalency exposure argument that we're getting, that we didn't give the Micro Four Thirds a fair shake, I, it just doesn't hold water to me in any way, shape, or form. You're saying, okay, it's like a, it's like a race car. Well, my go-kart doesn't go as fast as your race car, so it's too many cylinders. You have to dumb it down to have the same number of cylinders as my go-kart, and now if you only drive in first gear, then the two are going to be equivalent as far as speed goes. And I'm going, well, yeah, but the reason you have a race car is because you have more <laughs> cylinders, and you can drive in another gear other than first gear, and that gives you a much nicer image. Yeah, that's it. That's basically it. <laughs> I don't understand it. I just feel like it's an argument. Uh, it's an argument built on the foundation of physics and not on practicality. Now, for film and video, I th feel like it's it has a better place, a stronger place to be able to use. But well, still, you still have that shallow depth of field is an issue. I mean, you look at the Panasonic cameras like the GH5 or the G9. They have incredible video capabilities and they're light and small and the batteries go forever. So there are a lot of advantages, uh, especially in video for Micro Four Thirds cameras. But so there it is, equivalency, math equivalency. stuff, geeky stuff. There you go. Um, we just said that all you equivalency nerds were all wrong. So enjoy that. So leave us a couple of comments, at least <laughs> two or 200. We would love to hear how you think we didn't do this right or if you think we did do this right. Because if we I didn't feel do like this we right, did this, we were very calculated know. on this. Very <laughs> what calculated. Else to do? <laughs> so if you're not happy with the way your camera performed, you know, uh, it's just the way they perform. Just flame us in the comments. It's yeah, fun. please do. Just get get the aggression out. It's okay. And make sure you subscribe to us here on the Slanted Lens. We really need your support. Subscribe to here on the Slanted Lens will help us to grow. We need that support to be able to keep going. So I hope you enjoyed this. And if it does make you feel like there's something you want to say, we love hearing that. I want our community to be able to learn about this. And in the comments is one of the best ways to make that happen. So give us a comment, subscribe, and keep those cameras rolling. And keep on clicking.